Welcome to Zion Presbyterian Church, December 26, 2021. And it's an unusual service today on this Boxing Day due to the limitations put upon us by the pandemic situation and the new directives that have been handed down to us from public health. We are unable to gather together for a service as a congregation, but we're recording this service on Thursday evening, and it will be live streamed as you have discovered on Boxing Day morning. This is going to be a brief service uh, with uh, no music or no choir. Uh, for those who would love music, again, I encourage you to tune in to our Christmas Eve service, which is available linked through our website or on our YouTube channel. We'll begin with a call to worship from Luke chapter 2. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all. Let us pray. The day of joy returns, Father in heaven, and crowns another year with peace and goodwill as we celebrate Christmas with rejoicing. Help us to remember the birth of Jesus in its true wonder and glory that we may share in the song of the angels and the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men. Close the doors of hate and open the doors of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing that Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clean hearts. May Christmas morning, may the day after, and all the days of Christmas to come make us happy to be your children. And may it bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven, for Jesus' sake. Father, we say these things knowing that as we come before you, we come as your children, and so we are glad. Amen. Again from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Hear the word of God. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe who was lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. I wonder what images went through your mind as I read that oh-so-familiar passage, pictures from books you read as a child, or famous paintings, scenes from movies, maybe even a children's pageant right here in front. Ever since St. Francis made the first crash some 800 years ago, recreated with real people and livestock that looked and moved and smelled authentic, 
Ever since then, the scene of the manger has never been far from us. But there's a scene which is, as far as I know, completely absent from any canvas, any stained glass window, any pageant. It's the scene of the morning after, the morning after, the night before. Thirty-six hours, say, after the baby Jesus was born. Christmas morning is for us a busy enough time with presents and stockings and fancy breakfasts even, a boxing day with church even. But stop and think for a moment of what Mary and Joseph and the baby are up to right about now, the morning after that very first Christmas morning. The Bible doesn't tell us, of course. It's busy with shepherds and angels and wise men and kings. We're left on our own to figure it out. Having gone through something at least a little like them with the birth of my own two children now many years ago, I'm sure that sleeping was a pretty high priority for Mary and Joseph. Finding some more reasonable accommodations than a stable, I expect, was also high on the list getting some food, something to drink, some of whatever passed for baby supplies 2,000 years ago, doubtless a few more swaddling clothes, whatever swaddling clothes may be, maybe someone to help care for Mary. No matter how I try, the only things I can imagine Mary and Joseph doing in the light of that morning after Christmas morning are very non-miraculous, down-to-earth, day-to-day things. They're going about the business of living, of surviving with now one more mouth to feed, but with the knowledge that, in a way that wasn't quite so real before, that God was with them, that God was right there. Now, soon enough for us, this Christmas season will come to a close and we'll go on our way engaged once again in the very non-miraculous down-to-earth day-to-day things. We'll be going about the business of living, much the same as Mary and Joseph, I expect. But will we continue to carry with us the knowledge that, in a way that wasn't quite so real before, that God was with us? that God is with us, and that God is right here. I think it's a great pity that the Bible doesn't include some more about the boring stuff that happened with Mary and Joseph and the baby. I think it's a great pity that we know nothing of that first day, that next day, that first week, that first month or year. Did did Joseph have a, a cousin there in Bethlehem? Did he get work right away as a skilled tradesman, or did they have to sell the donkey to get by until he did? Did they end up staying in the stable for a few more days, or was there finally room at the inn, or, or did someone take them in for a while, or, or did they have enough hidden away in their few possessions to manage first and last month's rent? I think it a great pity that the Bible doesn't include more stuff like that, more of the day-to-day normal stuff as life. For, for as we all know, it's the day-to-day normal stuff that makes up the vast majority of our days, as surely it did for the Holy Family so long ago. But for Mary, for Joseph, the difference is this. For them, the Christ child remained a reality every waking, every sleeping moment. For them, Christmas was not quite so easily left behind. For them, Christmas cried for attention, cried to be fed, cried to be changed, cried to be be picked up or or, or put down or, or, or softly rocked to sleep. For them, Christmas would not be forgotten. For them, every baby's cry was a reminder that, in a way that wasn't quite so real before, that God was with them. God is right there. The challenge for us is to follow their example. The challenge for us is to somehow take hold of the spirit of Christmas, that spirit of hope and joy and generosity and celebration, and have it remain for us a reality, not just throughout the few days of this season, but throughout the year. 
After all, much of our year bears a greater resemblance to what happens after Christmas than to the miraculous night itself. Much of our year is concerned with the mundane business of food on the table, oil for the furnace, gas in the tank, money for the bills. But here's the miracle. As Mary and Joseph would come to know, and as we need to remember, the same God who looked upon us with compassion, the same Son who was born in a stable, the same Spirit that filled the world with light is with us always, now at Christmas and in the light of day, every day, not just Christmas, every day. And so, may the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of hope and joy, generosity and celebration, the knowledge, the awareness that God is with us, that God is right here, be with us this day, the day after, the morning after, the night before, and every day. Amen. Let us pray. God, who has come to us, with the angels we sing and we glorify your name, thankful for all you have given us, for your presence in the world, for our nation at peace, for the witness of your church celebrating around the world. But today we are especially grateful for the gift of your Son, who gave up his heavenly home for a manger and a cross so that we might experience redemption, a gift that neither spoils nor fades. You surprise the world, O God, by coming not in clashing thunder or flashing lights, but in the quiet and simple splendor of a child's radiant face. Help us to understand this mystery of love, love beyond all loves, that we may be led to a new kind of love, a love that loves not by what we can get, but in what we can give. A love that counts not who is worthy to receive, but beyond our human calculations is showered freely on all. Show us the way of Bethlehem's child, that in seeing we may believe, and in believing we may learn again how to love. Good God, open the hearts and minds of many this Christmas time to the good and saving news of Jesus Christ that all whose lives are insecure or empty or aimless may find in the one born at Bethlehem all they need today and much more besides. We pray in silence for the needs of so many, of those we love, and of those who are by many unloved, except by you. Hear our silent prayers, O Lord. Amen. The joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the magi, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.